Yo, 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 let's clap it up right now. <laughs> yep. That was the trailer for Transformers Rise of the Beast in theaters Friday, June 9th. Yes. Now, keep it going. Because people think I'm in the movie and I'm not correcting them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not correcting them. Next one, next one. Next one. You know, I'm working. Steve, Stephen Capel Jr. coming by after you. Nice. But our next guest is, I'm happy to have for so many different reasons. Um, I love a great journey. I love a great story. You know, when I think about this young woman who's been acting since the tender age of 10, Mike Muse, 10 years old, she had a dream. Uh, and then she pursued that dream. And along the way, she had to do a lot of work. She didn't just jump on the set. She actually studied it. She graduated with a B.A. from Pace University in theater. Give her a round of applause for that. Let's get it. <laughs> My daughter went to New York, NYU, and went to Tisch. Wow. I know how hard that could be. She premiered on Off Off Broadway with a play called Subverted. Now, I always have a special respect for folks who do Off Off Broadway. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> you get paid with bags of chips. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> and you got to love what you're doing. But she's gone on to do so many different things. I played that Smile record because she played the character of Jay-Z's mom in that video for Smile. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought you did an excellent job. I remember you in the... Um, the Hate You Give. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2018, I thought you did an excellent job in that. You've done so many in Swarm. Listen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm scared as hell of you because of that role. I'm glad you came dressed like you did today. <laughs> but I think it's something that's really important about you that's happening in the way you carry yourself, in the way you rise each time you go up another level. You're not just playing characters on screens really well, but I really feel like you're inspiring a generation of young women, young black women, brown women, um, women in general uh, from your work ethic. And, and the result of the work that you put out is always high quality. And the best part of it, when you meet this young woman, you're going to feel like you've known her for years. I know I'm a big brother. Just the way we greeted each other. We almost cried on the set I'm of Transformers. Right you know, but, we, but this is what I feel about you. That's why I came out in the hallway to greet you and your people. You're special. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of you. And after this movie come out, man, we are all rising to a whole new level. Yes. Not just Rise of the Beast. Rise but we, of the East. Okay, That's Rise of the yours, East. Baby. Please welcome Dominique Fish back, citizen. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. What's happening? Hey, you got me emotional over here. Dominique, you yeah. got it. Sometimes it takes others to kind of tell you what it is you're accomplishing because you're so engulfed in it. You've been so immersed in it. So I know the way you work. You're very particular about your work. You're very invested in it. I had a moment one time, we share this story a lot because it's kind of a stunning moment uh, where Michael Jordan came up to me once mm. um, at, a, at one of his events and he doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> it, it does qualify as a stunt. That is a stunt. All right. Uh, and he doesn't do that, you know, mm -hmm. and he came up and addressed me and, and told me some really powerful words. He said, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, he told me that people tell uh, he never says he's the greatest. Uh, he just does the work. But when people say it, he embraces, he'll embrace it and accept it. I want to tell you, you're great at what you do. Thank you're you. a tremendous inspiration. Thank you. Stay the course, okay? Do what you do. Be who you are. And I'm happy to have you on this show. Mm. When you play Gloria. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. And you're playing Jay-Z's yes. mom in yes. a Jay-Z video. Yes. What was that moment like? You know, it was crazy. I was um, in Atlanta filming The Hate You Give. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm playing this 16-year-old character like I normally do. And uh, Miles J., the writer, director, he got my number from one of my castmates from The Deuce. And he, he told me he wanted to do this music video for um, Jay-Z, that they weren't going to actually do a video for that. Mm -hmm. But he, he had an idea, and then they, they greenlit it for him to do it. Um, and then the three days that they wanted to film the music video was the three days that there was the riot scene in The Hate You Give. Mm -hmm. So it was no way that Fox was going to reschedule that for me to be able to do the smile video. So uh, at this point, I know that with manifestation, you have to mm. believe and then you have to let it go. Mm. And, I, and I pray, I said, God, I know that schedules are man-made. So if it's meant to be, 
you'll you'll let it be. And I left it alone. And about two days later, he hit me up like, uh, we auditioned other girls and we couldn't find the person that we wanted. So Rock Nation pushed the dates back so that you can do it. Oh my gosh, yeah. you made Jay Z postpone this video shoot. Wow. Yeah. That's different. That's amazing. Wow. Thank so, you. Did, so when you did you when you met him? Yes. Oh, I met it? him uh, at the Rock Nation brunch okay. a couple of months after that. He didn't come to set. Um, and then, you know, he, he comes into the room and all the energy goes towards him. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's Jay-Z. I'm not really starstruck a lot, but mm-hmm. I didn't expect to feel like I was, I was like, oh, man, that's Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, so I decided right, I'm going to go talk to him. As soon as I said that, I felt like the all everybody parted. Mm-hmm. And I make eye contact. And I'm like, hi, I'm down. He's like, you're going to introduce yourself. I know who you are. He said, your hair is different, but your eyes are the same. And that he was honored that I played his mom. I took him back to the time. And all I could say was, I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> he was like, I know. <laughs> you that too? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah you That's Brooklyn great. folks, they're really rah-rah I mean, in professional environments, too. It happens. <laughs> it happens? It happens. Can't wow. And that, and that was a music video. But how much, is it a different gratification for when you're playing in a series or a big screen or a music video? Uh. I think it's just different, you know, in TV and film, you get words to express yourself. And obviously the words are already decided with the music. And that's different. You know, I'm just telling the story emotionally through through my face and Uh through my relationship with the other actors. So it is uh, it is different. But um, I mean, you know, what was uh, was crazy too? my first time being on a billboard in um, Times Square was the deuce. Okay. And right, I remember recording it because right above it was the four four four. Uh huh. And I was like, wow. oh, got it. I said, God is so, God is so funny. That's I'm so Brooklyn. But I didn't even, but I didn't even know. I thought, I just thought it was so Brooklyn. Right. Uh-huh. And then it was like, oh, actually, you're gonna be a small part of this this wow. album before you even knew it. So it was pretty incredible. Wow, man, yeah. Dominic Fishback is here. Was there ever a, a point where you questioned, is this gonna work out for me? Um, I don't think that I questioned if it's gonna work out. It was a matter of when it was gonna happen. Okay. Mm. Like, man, do I, am I gonna get my big break when I'm fifty? Mm-hmm. You know, like what, like what's gonna, when is it gonna happen? When I was like twelve, I said, man, God wouldn't make me this way if it if it wasn't supposed to happen. I'd be too cruel. Mm-hmm. And then I knew that other people had done it before me. You know, it wasn't a mm-hmm. thing where you didn't see any, like you know, it's possible. Mm-hmm. And so if it's possible, then I can do it too. Yeah. So I just kind of kept that tunnel vision. That tunnel vision. I have mm-hmm. this theory that the journey is a part of the success, right? You know, it's not always the final. It's not the I final s- destination. I started accepting that. You and started. I, yeah, yeah. I, I suffer less because I started accepting that. Oh my gosh, yeah. I you suffer less. less. Um, at what point did you realize then that oh shit, this is happening? Oh, um, maybe, maybe. I, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe Judas. Judas? Mm. Yeah, and that's really? kind of later on. You mm-hmm. know, I had done Project Power. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and I went from Project Power straight to uh, Cleveland to okay. shoot uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. But I think before it was like, you know, oh, I want to, I need, I need to go to this event or that event, and I'm not getting invited mm-hmm. or whatever. Or you want to wear this out? It is you're not getting people are not not seeing you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably probably why I got really emotional hearing you who speak because mm-hmm. I have been I've been acting since since I, I wanted to act since I was 10 years old um, and I auditioned for this theater company mm-hmm. called Tada and I never got in I auditioned three times and mm-hmm. then when I was 12 my guidance counselor said I didn't have the it factor when I wanted to wow. audition Ooh. when wow. I wanted to audition for LaGuardia and I auditioned anyway and I, I didn't get in so I I just decided that I would go to high school in Brownsville I didn't go to performing arts high school. I stayed. It. I stayed. I went to another part of the hood, like not uh-huh. leaving East New York to go to Brownsville. Um, they didn't have a theater company. They didn't have any of those things. Uh, but I stayed, and I'm I'm glad because I felt like I got to stay with my community a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when I play these characters, it comes from an authentic and a raw place, but also training because I did do so. There, there's a, a balance of um, of both. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Brownsville did have Mike Tyson and MOP, just for the record. <laughs> uh, this guidance counselor who My told gosh. you you didn't have the it factor, yeah. you got to go back to that that guidance counselor. Not not in no retribution or no yeah. revengeful sort of way, but yeah. 
that guidance counselor needs to know what happened to you. But you know, on her board, it also said like some people just can't. And I journal all the time. I uh-huh. keep them. So, I, so like <laughs> literally in my journal at twelve yeah. years old, I wrote. And then she, <laughs> I said, and this b word, and I did, I put b word. I didn't I didn't say you didn't I say just, bitch at twelve. I just put b word. Okay. <laughs> and this b word had some people just can't, right? And I said, like, why would she do something like that? Uh, but now when I look about look look at it now, I'm kind of like, what what must have happened? What must have happened to her? Mm-hmm. You know what dreams did she mm-hmm. not achieve um, to wow. feel like to feel like that, That's and so that mature. has to be yeah. that has to be deeply hurtful. Okay. Yeah. Tracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Well, you mentioning how journaling helped you to process that because that guidance counselor was monstrous, in my opinion, to say those words. Um, it reminded me. I read that swarm which was magnificent Thank and horrific you. all at once. That's fair. You spoke <laughs> about you spoke about how um journaling helped you to get into that dark side. Mm-hmm. Can you speak about the power of journaling since you've been doing it for so long and how it's helped both in your professional and personal life? Of course. Yeah, journaling just helps me to go back and see how far I, ca- I came and to know that I knew these things all along. Mm-hmm. That's probably one of the biggest things with journaling. Mm-hmm. Uh but I always journal as my character Characters. I journaled as uh, Deborah and Judas and Black Messiah, so the journal that she carries around is one that I asked Shaka to, that I could have because mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure that the audience saw that she had her own thing going on. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe it's not a romance. Maybe we won't get to see her outside of the Black Panther Party, but at least in our peripheral, when we see that, our subconscious mind will be like, oh, she has a lot of opinions about a lot of things, right. even when we don't hear them. And so the poem that she recites in the movie is one that that I wrote. And so I wrote a oh, bunch yeah. of poems in that. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I always, yeah. I always journal, and I felt like um, the psychology of a character is how I know why they do the things that they do. And mm-hmm. so if there's a director, sometimes when you do TV, a different director comes in every time. Mm-hmm. So now you're like, you're the one that's consistent with the character. This director is gonna give their ideas, but you, you ultimately know. Oh, I know my character wouldn't do that. Maybe they would do this instead. But I know because, you know, any direction that I get, I can make sure it lives naturally within the character because I journal. With Swarm on the page, it didn't have a lot. I knew that she was answering surfaced answers, but I knew that a lot wasn't going on Mm -hmm. um, for her. So instead of trying to journal and force that for her, I decided to journal as myself and identify everything that gave me pause or made me afraid. Um, because the camera picks up everything, and I respect the camera. So I got to clear out any judgments that I have about Dre Uh in order for me to be a clear vessel. I always pray, God, let me be a clear vessel for this Mm -hmm. character. Um, And that was was definitely scary because I I feel acting is very spiritual Uh for me. And so um, that's why I was like, can we have a therapist on the set? Ah. Oh, wow, you asked for a therapist. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh Because, you know, I'm inspired by... Heath Ledger and the Joker mm-hmm. and all this type of stuff but mm-hmm. you know I, I didn't want actors like a lot of times we give our hearts and souls to these roles and then we're left in pieces yep. after it you know right? By everybody, for, yeah, for people's enjoyment then the director goes on to do their next thing and the grip and, and the, the DP mm-hmm. and everybody and the actor is the one being like either hurt physically hurt from doing something mm-hmm. or emotionally drained uh, from doing something and I, and I love what I do so it's just about taking Precaution, Word. and I and I was like, oh, am I being dramatic? And I said, no, you, it's better to have it and not need it yeah. than Word. to need it and not have it. Have you always been this outspoken? Because mentioning, hey guys, I want to have a therapist. Also, in Swarm playing Dre, initially you were going to be playing her sister, and you told Donald Glover and the team like, nah. I really should be commanding this series, uh-huh. which I feel like is probably scary for a lot of actors, depending on where they are in their career. But yeah. you don't have a problem of advocating for yourself. Is that something? Is that nurture or nature? Uh, maybe a bit of both. Yeah, but it's definitely uh, nurture. My mom, since I was a kid, when I was writing poetry, and I would I would be very honest. And a lot of times, my friends, their parents, be like, "Oh, don't tell my business. Don't say that." My mom be like, "It's your truth, Dom. You could say it." You could say. Mm. So I perform on these stages, these stages in front of all these people at 15, 16 uh-huh. years old, and my mom is like, "It's okay. I'm I'm putting her business out there too, but it's my truth, and she allowed me to say it." So I always knew from a young age that that my voice mattered. Uh, the, but but in advocating for myself, I I know that the worst thing, the worst feeling that I get is when I can't sleep at night because I didn't say something. Right. Mm. Yeah. Shit's in your gut, right? Yeah. I hate yeah. that feeling. It's painful. So yeah. I don't. I I knew that if I didn't say the thing about Dre that I would regret it. Uh-huh. And opportunities like that don't come around a lot, especially for, you know, women of color. 
uh, is essentially a one woman show. Yeah. There's no other series regulars. There's no B storyline that you cut to. Every episode you're following Dre, and I knew I could do it. And then even Donald said, well, if that's the role you want, that's the role you get. Mm. So I didn't even have to audition for it. You didn't even have to audition. Shout out to Donald Glover, Word. too, man. He killed it, too. Um, yeah, man, I didn't even know Dre. Like, I didn't see you. <laughs> I didn't see you. Dominique no. at all in Dre. Yo, Dre was scary. She was scary, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, kind of jealous of the audience. <laughs> you come here, you getting flashbacks. Yo, yo, I'm looking at Dominique now. You don't right. look so nice to me. <laughs> That's so funny. But what you were saying, the audience said? I said, I, I, I feel a little bit jealous of the audience because I don't get to watch it as the audience gets to watch it. Uh, People are yeah. like, I was so scared. I couldn't I couldn't go to sleep. I can't watch it at night. Yeah. I had to be X, Y, Z. And I'm like, dang, I don't feel that. I'm just like laughing. You know, right. I'm like laughing at the stuff that she does. And it's pretty funny, which was exciting for me as well. It didn't set up like, oh, this is going to be funny, but in journaling and Mm -hmm. and realizing and being present for the character, the physicality came Mm -hmm. through. And I'm so influenced by like Jim Carrey Mm -hmm. and Lucille Ball. And so that that was exciting. When I look at him, like, oh, that's such a Jim Carrey kind of walk or Uh whatever. So it was exciting. There's definitely different pieces of of why I wanted to, to do it. Not just to scare the people. Okay, well, (laughs) you played a murderer really well. (laughs) Mike Muse. This is, I kind of understand that a little bit of your depth. I think it's interesting how you've pulled on certain characters like Heath Ledger. Um, and then you just mentioned Lucille Ball right now. Right now. I find something interesting right now where black young female actors are drawing upon Lucille Ball. I just interviewed another really? black actress, Megan Good, and she is pulling off Megan. of Lucille Shout Ball. And so I'm just really interested in that world. But that's another yeah. conversation for another time. Yeah, I watched it when I was 10. Yeah. And I was just like, I got to be like Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your constitution is very strong. And themes I keep pulling out of this conversation so far are spirituality and spiritualness. And I'm noticing you're wearing an 1111 ring on oh, right yes. now. <laughs> now. I'm just curious about, do you look for signs and wonders? Because I'm thinking about how you had the Deuces billboard and then 444 was on top of it. And yeah. then you hate you give jay-z pushes out the date for in order for you to film it like so when you maybe hear a song when you're going through something and you hear his music do you feel Absolutely. like that's a sign of wonder or affirmation yeah well you know uh um just even talking about transformers and being in peru is sacred ground so they had to have a shaman come and bless the film for being on it mm-hmm. my grandmother passed away in 2012 and um, i had this spiritual experience where i felt as though she comes to me and but as butterflies um, and so when we're in Peru, the shaman is doing a ceremony. Butterfly comes and lands in the middle of, of the ceremony, yeah. stays there for about 15 minutes. And then I'm, I'm staring at it, and then I'm like, it's going to leave by the time the ceremony is over. It doesn't leave. Wow. I lay on the grass with this butterfly, and he, it's, on a, it's on a piece of grass, and I'm laying, uh, staring eye to eye. And it feels like I'm communicating with this butterfly. I put my finger out, have to another piece of grass, and then I'm like, okay, and I just move it over. And then about seven minutes later... It put one leg on my finger and then the other, and I lifted it up like this. And all of it is on video. It's on my Instagram. It's on video? <laughs> all of it. They call all of it on video. And it, like, I literally welded a butterfly. Right? Wow. Patience. Like, literally, wow. seven, seven minutes. The videos, I got, I got it to a minute on, on Instagram. But the, what they have is seven minutes of me laying there with this butterfly and it not leaving. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Did you? What was your grandmother's name? What's her first Debra, name? Debra. Debra. Which is why, like, Judas. Debra. Is Debra. Debra. Braxton. Wow. So some more. Debra Braxton. Braxton. Yeah. Debra. Debra Braxton. Yeah. We say it three times here on this show. Yeah. Yep. And you play Debra and Judas. Judas. Wow. You got it. So you do got a lot of signs yeah. and symbols. Oh, um, always. My life is full of signs. And okay. Symbols. And then when we saw each other on the set of Transformers, that was a sign too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Decided <laughs> that you're going to be in the next one. Yeah. Hey. 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 I like I that. I too. like how she took it. Deep. But, um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, uh, a Broadway show called Ain't Too Proud to Beg, uh, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, they had their opening night and it was. The day it was like my birthday, yeah, mm. and everybody started singing, and then Sway started singing, and it was our first time meeting. He started singing, met. so it was a, a video with you in the back saying, "Hey, you just turned your hurting." He was like, "Happy birthday!" birthday. Oh <laughs> shit! Oh okay, I remember that yeah. too, man. Yeah, that was um an amazing play, and I but I did remember though the seats were so small though. <laughs> Broadway, <laughs> but even that. <laughs> <laughs> but to have fun with the naming game, that play was written by my dear friend, whose first mm, name is Dominique. Dominique, Dominique Morrison. Dominique wow. Russo. Yeah. So again, and I've with been you doing her name the show for a little while. Yeah, yeah. and so then to play with that name—that that's true. And we had her on the show as well. Nice. 
And then DB is like a Transformers, you know, collector. Yeah, I'm a geek. Nice. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I don't know if you happen to see uh, when we had Shia LaBeouf here, and he was talking about, he, he to quote him, he said Transformers was a rocket ship that he grabbed onto, and that's what it did for his career, yes. which is pretty much, you know, clear as day, yes. as you can see. Um, when you reached that moment, like you were talking about a minute ago, where Judas and you saw, like, okay, things are changing now. I'm getting the opportunities, you know what I mean? The budgets are getting bigger. The cast is getting cooler. Mm. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, as your career progresses, it kind of comes at a cost because you have to sacrifice your privacy. You know, you have to keep people around. You have to interact with people differently. Yes. So with that sort of double-edged sword of I'm getting better, you know, my career is skyrocketing, but I have to sort of take a look at how I have to change my personal life. Mm -hmm. Have you given thought to that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I also think that because I wanted to act for, for so long, and I did, I was a huge Disney fan and I love Shia and even Stevens and I watched him go from a TV star to a movie star by way of Transformers so in my my little brain I was like okay so I have to do something like that uh -huh. you know I was like okay, he did that I didn't imagine that it would actually be that like Transformers so that's um, incredible but I also think that because I was aware it wasn't that at a young age I was chasing fame per se but it was more like the, the places that I want to reach and the projects that I want to do Fame is a result of that. It just uh -huh. is with mm -hmm. the the links that I want to reach. So I think my whole life I've been preparing for that. I was in a theater company when I Googled free acting programs for kids in New York City. Mm. The, in order to act in this company, you had to write your own stuff. And then when you wrote your own stuff, we had to then uh, do talkbacks with the audience. So even talking with you guys now or uh -huh. doing press, I enjoy I enjoy interviews. Uh -huh. I love to talk about the work. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. So I feel like everything in my life was leading me to there. To there. Yeah. So when I think about it, even last year, I stayed the whole summer in Brooklyn, uh -huh. and I rode the trains. The whole time, I, yeah. I was just yeah. like, you know what, I'm gonna ride the train. Do people I don't know. recognize you. Some people, some people, they're like, they're more like, oh, it's so good to see you again. And yeah. I'm like, good to see you again too. You know, they yeah. don't realize yeah. that. And then sometimes when after they do that, they go, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. My God, like, what are you doing on a train? You're not supposed to be on a train. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, I did it because I said, well, next summer Transformers comes out, yeah. and I don't know if I'm gonna miss something. So what if I take the time to do all the things that I might miss? I don't think I'm gonna miss the train, but uh, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I, I had to just try it to see. So I think that a lot of it, uh, in my spirit, have been um, pre preparing for it. And you know, I got this uh, tattoo right here that says "Be Yourself, Love" in my mom's handwriting. Okay. Handwriter. Okay. And I and I realized that that's all I could do. Just like, be I yourself. Yeah, I can't be perfect. So you know, I'm and also that's why I think I say I'm from Brooklyn a lot. So if you see me someday and you and I got the the ill face on, just know she's from Brooklyn. It's yeah, fine. yeah, you very Brooklyn. I'm I, so I, Brooklyn. I, and when you and Anthony get together, and, and shout out to Anthony Ramos, yes, and, our guy. Uh, Luna Lauren, uh, Toby and Wigway. Yes, uh, all of them were on the set, and it, it just seems storybook that Anthony Ramos and you. Mm -hmm came up in this game together. Y'all knew each other as kids. We knew each other. We knew each other more, uh, like, about, met about, like, seven uh -huh. years ago. But the funniest thing is I used to play football on the block with the boys. Word. Yeah. And then uh, and then one of the boys used to always leave in the middle of the game, about 12 years old, always leave in the middle of the game to go to his, bas his baseball mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. He was on the same team as Anthony. Wow. wow. More signs. It, it, more signs. Mm -hmm. And then Anthony and I would meet up in a cafe in Brooklyn and be like, okay, so what are we going to do? To he'd be like, D, what are we going to do together? He's, he'd be like, you know, you the one, you the answer. Like, I have to say, you the answer. And I used to be number three mm -hmm. in basketball by Iverson. <laughs> so he used to always kind of re <laughs> refer to me as that. Uh -huh. um, and so I was like, we, we have to do something amazing, something so epic in Brooklyn. Never could we have imagined wow. doing something like this it's making history you yeah know? rise of the beast rise man big round of applause <laughs> that life about to change yeah. <laughs> you look excited for it excited. you know we all have had our bouts of celebrity and fame you know and it's it's a beautiful thing it could be a great thing but it's also the flip side if you had to give a a, a young aspiring um, actor some advice on how to cope with fame what would you tell them um wow uh, i don't know i if, I think that I I I I have a lot of support. Mm -hmm. You know, I have I have a life coach, like a feminine coach, therapy, I have friends that I talk to about spirituality and things like that. Um, so even when I was taking Swarm, I was like, oh man, I, I consider myself a, a light worker. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, in a lot of my projects, I'm, I'm staying in light per se, but I know that I'm supposed to be. I'm I'm a versatile actor. 
Um, so I talked to some of my friends, and they were like, well, to do light work, you have to go to the to darkness as well. Yes, like indeed. We can't bypass. We're in, a, we're in a world of duality. Yeah. There's good and evil. There's light and mm-hmm. dark. There's, you know, you can't bypass other things. And so maybe going over to that side of Dre, you're shedding light on something mm-hmm. else. So I, I try to, to think about things like that. So um, definitely using uh, having my, my friends and, and people around. Um, journaling, yeah. yeah, video journaling. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What I what I what I did do it started this in 2020, but I wake up and if I had anxiety, I would identify what is giving me anxiety, mm-hmm. and then I would write it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. write out all of, like the negative things or whatever I'm feeling, and then I would meditate. Yeah. And then after I meditate, I would write again, and I realized that the thing that I wrote after the meditation was clear mm-hmm. and good. And and it was the true the true thing underneath all of the ego and sites, mm-hmm. societal ideas, so that kind of helped clear clear those things away. You are ready for this yes, moment, man! Is. I swear, <laughs> Dominique. Thank you, oh, man. Give her a big round of applause, wow. Dominique Fishback. I promise, I, I got to have you do some poetry. Oh yeah. So we, we we said we was gonna do that when you came on the show, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and but I promise folks um I that, that they'll be able to talk with you. So Deron from Florida is on the line. Deron, go ahead. Hey, Deron. Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, Ms. Dominique. Hello. Um, you say you love to write poetry, and I'm wondering, well, it's two questions. I'm wondering, would you ever publish any of your poetry? And then the second question is, has any, I mean, you're such a great actor, and I can see you in prime time. Has anyone ever approached you about doing something prime time, national TV? So you, yeah, like uh, um, series that seasons that go on and mm-hmm, on. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, well, first, um, thank you so much. The poetry, absolutely. I've been working on it right now. Okay. I'm working on my my poetry book. Uh, yes. So that's exciting. Um, and then in, in terms of uh, in terms of prime time, you know, I'm I'm definitely open. I think it just has to be a, a show or a project that that challenges me that I know I'm gonna. That I won't be upset if something else comes and the, mm-hmm. and the schedule doesn't yeah, work out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of times I do limited. I like to get in and out. I'm not like uh, beholden to one thing. Because even when I did the Deuce, um, I, lo- I love that show. A lot of times, like second season, uh, I was only filming about two times a week, but other casting directors would be like, oh, they have first dibs on you. So they would kind of stay away, even though I had this time. And the producers were like, no, we want you to do other stuff. But it was harder for me to be able to do multiple things because people were so afraid of the schedule. So I tend to stay away from I tend to stay away from it. But, I, you know, I never say never. You never say never? No. Okay. Dominique Fishback is here. Give a round of applause. Woo! Transformers is the movie. I know you got to go. Playing this character is important for so many reasons. One of the things I heard you talk about is representation. Can you speak to that before you do this poem? Of course, of (laughs) course. One thing I love about my character in this movie is, well, just shout out to Stephen Capel Jr. Because when I sat with him to talk about it, he was like, you know, he wants to have her own story her own story arc and um, her own autonomy. And that was important to me. So I said, like, I'm an actor. I like to give notes. He was like, you give me your notes at 2 o'clock in the morning. I, I spared him. I didn't give it at 2 o'clock in the morning. But mm-hmm. I did give a lot of notes. And uh, because of that, they had me sit with the writers about two or three times just to talk about these ideas. And it's never that my ideas have to be in it. It's mm-hmm. just... You know, uh, just the opportunity to talk about it. And um, she's from Brooklyn. She's from East New York. There's a lot as of well. Brooklyn on this movie. I love it. Uh, it's this yes. premised in Brooklyn, right? Yes, 1994. 1994 in Brooklyn. Yep. Um, so she's from Brooklyn and she's a scientist and uh, she doesn't change her dialect mm-hmm. to be considered smart. And that was something that was really important to me. Okay, man. Dominique Fishback mm-hmm. is here. Can you go get our next guest, Kalani? Maybe we can have a moment. Yeah. All right. Maybe we can have a moment. Uh, can you take us out with something? Sure, sure. Okay. You're going to have to stop me because, uh, you know, get a little long-winded. We've got but... about two or three minutes. All right, we good All then. Right, okay. uh, this poem is called um, Our History. Wait, wait, I know you have to go. That's why it's a time limit. So I'm All good. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. All right, go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, what about me? What about our history and your alliance with me? You jump ship, you pull to Italy, World War One on me, but I wasn't corrupt or nothing. I wouldn't have traded you for nothing because we had history. And I crossed a dozen battlefields and I would have given you my battle shields and you wouldn't have gave me nothing but the boot. You tell me, hold my fire, how you turn on me and shoot after all the love I gave to you? After the memories I saved of you? Because that was our history, but I guess that love is history because look at how you dissing me. You're not FDR. You can't make a new deal to fix a great depression. 
depression when you left me in a Hooverville on your Nazi flow. You put on a Hitler show with your little Mr. Winsky on your Bill Clinton flow. But what about me? What about our history and the secrets that we know? Now you having secret alliances? Selling to both sides and she's giving you more. But you swore she didn't matter. We had history and you love me now even more than before. So now I'm confused. I don't know the rules. I'm not sure. Because eventually it became me versus her. You started shaving my score. What was that for? Like we never had history? Like it wasn't just the other day you was hugging and kissing me. I voted and campaigned for you. Made a good name for you. You was a smooth politician. Because once you got the power, then you started switching. Can't even describe how stupid I feel. Wasn't we supposed to keep it real? Come to find out you cook it, you switch cars and they hand you deal. So I spit and I declare war. I'm America in this cold war. I don't back down. I stand ground because now we in the civil war. I, mean, I was on your side and you changed on me, had me suited up to lead, rearranged on me the order and ranking and chose a rookie over me. How she annexed my territory. I always remember what you told me. You said don't ever let nobody violate or play me and you of all people violated and betrayed me. That's crazy. But I always heard that history always repeats. Yeah, no, oh, my God. Why are you sad? <laughs> oh, oh. Cashback. <laughs> Thank you so much. No. Our eyes are getting bigger and bigger. Like, who is this? Not yeah. no. So many la- Wow. You're Thank magnificent. You so Thank you. This is Superstar. so awesome, man. Thank and open that door. See if he got real quick. Let me see. No, no. It's, it's, her, it's the other time. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Uh, Transformers, <laughs> Rise of the Beast in theaters Woo! this Friday, June 9th. Yes. We got to sell it out. Yes, please. We are happy for you for so many reasons and everybody on this set. Thank you know, you. we're going to be talking with Stephen Capel Jr. in momentarily, but Dominique, keep glowing. Wow. Keep Thank flowing. Yeah. Keep flowing. I'll I get, will. That's my Jay-Z. Keep flowing, Dominique. Hey. All right? Oh, <laughs> okay. light. Dominique Fishback, give a big Woo! round of applause. Thank you guys. Thank yes, you. yes, absolutely. Yes.